Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Today, I want to talk to you about shock cord mounts. Um, I'm going to build a couple of different styles, um, and these will apply to low and mid power uh, shock cord mounts. Um, for high power rockets, go to the uh, videos that we did on building the torrent rocket. Um, the very first one shows you how to put together a shock cord mount. Uh, basically, that one is attached to a screw eye that's in one of the bulkheads. Um, my favorite shock cord mount, um, for especially ones with paper rings, um, the little trick that I do is to tie the shock cord. And when you use a Kevlar shock cord, and that's what I use almost exclusively, uh, you want to have a long cord um, because you want the nose cone to come out and to decelerate before it hits the end of the cord. So basically there's no such thing as a shock cord that's too long. Uh, the only thing that you might have to do is to do the little trick, which was one in another video, on making some loops like this. And you probably do this with extension cords, um, but that will allow you to um, gather up the material so it doesn't all tangle. Um, so the first thing that I do, this is going to be my motor mount tube. I'm going to tie a slip knot around the tube. Just like that. So that when I pull it tight, see it cinches down really nice like that. I'll do it again. So you, when the shock cord tugs on it, it just pulls it really tight. Um, and then I'll take the end of the cord and I'm going to run it through a centering ring. Now this is the, the trick that I was talking to you about is you need this centering ring because without it, the uh, the forward centering ring is too weak by itself. Uh, and I learned this the hard way when my shock cord pulled right through this ring. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll take some wood glue and when you use Kevlar shock cords, always use, always use wood glue because um, shock cord that has CA glue on it like this one right here is really stiff and the other thing it does is it will create a point when the shock cord bends back and forth where the fibers actually break and we don't want that to happen. Uh, wood glue is a little bit flexible and allows the shock cord to flex without breaking the fibers. So the way I'll do it and this is most of our kit instructions particularly on the Dynastar rockets. We run a bead of glue around the outside just going to smooth it out and I'll have paper towels handy. Slide that forward ring into that glue like that and put some more glue on the other side. And my slip knot came done. All right, then slide that ring forward and at the same time see how it's bunching up there. Just give a tug here on that side. Hmm. My ring is grabbing already. There we go. Okay. Um, and then pull the shock cord through. And as you pull, it's tightening around the tube like that. So then just push it all the way up against the centering ring. Make sure everything's aligned straight. And then we're going to put some more glue on the shock cord and glue it down to the tube. Just like that. And then you can put a fillet of glue around this one here. And then to complete the engine mount, you put the back centering ring on. And if you have an engine hook, you'd put that in too. But this will give you a nice, strong shock cord anchor. And the, the harder you pull on this, the tighter that slip knot is going to get. And it's really going to cinch down and it's not going to come loose. And the ring here prevents it from sliding forward out the tube. This one here has already been already dry and you can really tug on it and it's not going anywhere. And you always want to tug on your shock cords before you fly them just to make sure that nothing's gone wrong. Um, and Kevlar, because it's heat resistant, it can be really close to the front end of the motor like this one here. 
Now this ring right here does not have to be on the back. It can also be on the front. So like on this one here, you could put a ring around the front. Um, if you don't have a ring, what you can do is take a strip of paper like this and just build up a ring. So I'll just take some glue, run a bead of glue around along the length of it. Just smear it and just wrap it around. Basically, we're building up a, a ring. And it gets a little messy on your fingers, but the, the glue will wash off with some soap and water, so don't worry about that. And what we want is the thickness. It's the thickness that creates the strength here. Um, so right now, my thickness is about the thickness of the cardboard tube originally. So then I would take another strip of paper and just do the same thing. Just build it up until you get some good thickness. You can see that this one is a little skinnier than the other one. And I did that just to save some weight. But you get the idea how this is going to go together. I got lots of good glue on my fingers right now. I'm sticking to everything. All right, just like that. All right, so that is my favorite shock cord mount for, for small rockets. Um, if, if you forget to do that, you can still come back and you can use the other shock cord method, which is I call the Estes method. And basically, on the Estes method, you, you have a little trapezoid piece of paper like that. And you take your shock cord, and then you smear glue on it. And then you lay the shock cord diagonally from one corner to the other. And then fold it in thirds like that. And then squeeze out any excess glue. Drop my motor. Squeeze out the glue like that. And then you want to kind of give it the curvature of the tube. And see, I've already glued one in, but you want to kind of take it into the tube and kind of go back and forth. And that gives it a little bit of curvature. And then we're going to put glue on this and we're going to put it into the tube. Now it's important that when you put that gluing into the tube, I don't know, can you see that? When you, when you glue it in there, it has to be deep enough into the tube so that the shoulder of the nose cone won't interfere with that. So on this particular nose cone, since it has such a long nose cone and my fingers aren't going to be long enough to get down in there, I'll put glue on it and I'll just put some glue on the back. And, and I like to use a lot of glue on this because since I can't get my fingers in there, a little bit of glue is going to smear around. So I'll, I'll drop that in there as far as I can reach. And then take a dowel and smash it down against the side wall of the tube. Now this you really got to let these dry a good 24 hours before you go out and fly your rocket because otherwise uh, since that glue is wet um, if, and if it doesn't dry fully it's just going to pull right out just like that so this one's been dried now for a little while and you always want to tug on them make sure that they're not going to come loose on you one of the final ways that you can make a shock cord mount um, is take some of the epoxy clay the fix it epoxy clay um, and I've already mixed up some. It's equal parts of A and B. Uh, you mix up a little glob of it. And just take your end of your shock cord. And I'm just going to tie a little knot in it. 
and smash that into the epoxy clay. And then you can just take that and do the same thing. Get it down far enough inside the tube that it's not going to interfere with the shoulder of the nose cone. Um, and the nice thing about the epoxy clay is you can smooth out the edges can smooth out the edges so that uh, the parachute will just slide right over it. Um, and this works for, you know, up to, you could probably use it on high power rockets too. You just, you need to use some thicker, heavy, heavier shock cord. So those are my favorite methods for making shock cord mounts. Uh, my name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue. And may all your rockets fly straight and true, and may all your shock cords be really tight.